Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We are coming at you on July 14th, 2021. This is just about six months into this uh, crazy Biden administration. Uh, So lots of stuff to talk about. But before we get to any of that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. In our upper right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. <clears throat> so let's jump right into it. Uh, uh, kind of the news of the day is the uprising in Cuba. Uh, a lot of protesting going on there. Um and it's uh, it's it's newsworthy, although it's not getting a huge amount of news. <laughs> so that's uh, uh, one of the things we wanted to talk about. And and oddly, uh, the biggest promoters of, of some of these socialist uh, type governments, <clears throat> Bernie and AOC and uh, Squad, Michael Moore, nowhere to be found. Uh, <laughs> usual, they're all for this socialism until it, it all falls apart, and then it's yeah, like, of course. somebody mismanaged it as as. Uh, Jen Psaki. Uh, Jen Psaki said, yes, it's just economic mismanagement. You know, it's always funny. You know, these are always mismanaged. I mean, w- what she doesn't understand is that it's uh, socialism itself is economic mismanagement. Yeah. <laughs> it always leads to central planning, which is, yeah. is the problem. <laughs> so anyways, I, I, before we get, I guess we can, we've got a lot to talk about about this, but uh, you guys want to jump into this and maybe we'll get a few images while we're going to. Well, there's no price signals, so uh, you know, of course, it's going to get mismanaged. You, you have to have uh, price signals, and you, you need uh, personal um, uh, property rights to to be able to give a price on. So you have to price it because it's what it's worth to you to do it, or to make it, or or to buy it. So um, you know, they they don't they they lack that. So there you have it. So, I don't know, Leon. You know, you know, you know the funny thing about these idiots who try to tell us about all these do good, these do gooders in government. You know, look at Jen Psaki's words. The, the problem she thinks that is going on in Cuba today is really and truly just the economic mismanagement by the government, and and she n- never stopped to think for one second what we are seeing on the streets of Havana is people trying to get their natural rights, where they can freely exercise their freedom in where is, whether it's in the economic realm or in the political realm, wherever it is that they can freely do these things. Since, since 1959, I think it was New Year's Day 1959, Fidel Castro walked into Havana and have ruled that nation with an iron fist. He died, I think, in 2016, uh, but prior to that, he had given over the, re- the, um, the reins to his brother, Rural Castro. And these people have pung that nation into the ground. We always hear about all these wonderful things going on in Cuba. Oh, you know, they have one of the greatest health healthcare in the world and all this other nonsense. It's a lie. It's a damn lie. Okay? F- freedom is the issue. Freedom is not economic mismanagement by the government. It is freedom of individuals that they don't have. That's why they're on the streets. Well, you know what's funny, too, is that uh, uh, Cuba has has held on relatively well. And you can almost take a snapshot in history of how long they've held on because all of the cars and technology is yes. a snapshot from that date, which is the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's uh, you know it, it's sad. I mean, all these people have been sort of trapped in time unless they took it, decided to take a dangerous journey on the ocean to get here to the United right. States. But uh, uh, you know, but when it's funny when you think about it, how long that country has managed to keep this uh, kind of horrible system alive. Whereas it, you know, you look at how fast <laughs> Venezuela is fading since they jumped all in on on socialism. Uh, you know, they started painting eyes of Hugo Chavez on the walls. <laughs> you know, he's watching your every move like like 1984. It's like, does anybody 
read in any of these countries anymore? <laughs> things like Orwell or anything. I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't they're think doing so. this. And it doesn't even occur to them. You know, that's like the low tech version of the Chinese. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> surveying. They, they they didn't have the technology to to watch everything you're doing, so they just painted eyes at the government. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, uh, but the reason, but the reason why Cuba have able, um, ironically, have been able to to survive this long, is because of the Cuban Americans in Southern Florida, who who have been supporting. Su well, they support their, their family obviously, and that end up you know keeping keeping uh, whether through tax revenues or whatever, keeping the government alive. Also, Cuba also does something else. They also send doctors all over the world. I think they have about 30,000, 40,000 doctors outside of Cuba. And they are paid, and the government is paid for, for the services of these doctors, even though the doctors probably get very little. I'm sure they don't, they don't get anything near what a doctor will be worth here in the United States. But all of these things, the combination of the, of the Cuban Americans in Southern Florida, well, throughout the United States, I should say, but mostly in Southern Florida, and some of the services that these doctors provide in other countries, which, which these countries do pay for, that have been able to keep, keep um, Cuba on its feet to some extent. But that country is in a real mess right now. It really is in a mess, seriously. And now the Biden administration, Jen Psaki in particular, trying to tell us, well, it's really on response to COVID. Oh, please. Oh, for crying out loud, that's response to COVID. That's what's causing it. That's nonsense. Yeah. Um, uh, you probably know better than I, Leon. I, I have heard uh, on documentaries about Cuba that in addition to their normal uh, government mandated jobs that people have that they really don't do much of, they may, sh you know, punch a time clock or something. I'm not sure. But in addition to that, they all have um, black market uh, jobs under the table. Yes that yes. they perform uh and of course that doesn't solve the whole issue with trade which they they lack as and but but at least it gives them trade amongst themselves that is uh black market but it's still you know it's their only form of free market in right. there is the yes. black market right is that true? definitely okay, definitely so, so that's one way to keep things going you know <laughs> you get a little extra income you know, you, you you don't really do anything in your, your stupid uh, government job. Maybe you show up and, you know, sweep, uh, you know, a, a section of sidewalk or something. I'm, I'm not sure what they do. Or you drive this um, this government-owned taxi cab, but the rest of the time you're wheeling and dealing out of your taxi uh, all kinds of other goods and services that, sure. you, that you can do on the black market. So, yeah, and, and in many cases, the government is away of your of your black market jobs and yeah. they, they allow it they allow it to continue because there's no other way for them to survive okay yeah so they allow it to continue sometimes to probably probably to avoid some of the things that we're seeing right now in havana right yeah. now okay but you know sooner or later it's going to catch up with you it's sooner or later mm -hmm. because as margaret tasha said you know that when you're in socialism and these socialist states and marxist states you always run out of other people's money you always do, mm. and you always end up in these conditions. You, you know, there's a very interesting story about, about the Soviet Union. I think I've told this story before. But Mikhail Gorbachev told Margaret Asher that they produce, the Soviet Union produce enough grain to feed the people, but one third of it rots before it gets to market. Because just like you said, Tim, there are no price signals, so who the hell cares, mm. right? They don't have to, to care about who, who whether it gets to market or not. There's no profiteering in it, so... Mm -hmm. It rocks. Well, you know, yep. it's, it's funny, too, with these black markets. It, it, it's both a, a blessing and a curse uh, because the, the black market is, is really people just trying to exchange with each other and do yes. things that they normally do in a free market. Uh, the problem is, is that the government is so heavy handed that not much is allowed. <laughs> so that's why they do everything under the table. But the problem is then that causes everybody to essentially be engaged in a sort of a criminal activity with respect exactly. to the government. And so now everybody essentially has to fear the government because they could all be arrested at any time for so, you because they're yes. all doing something. And, and that's, you know, it, it, this is the thing, you know, you look at Al Capone and prohibition. We don't have those same mobsters running around shooting up the streets today over beer and wine. And the reason yeah. is, is because 
it was a black market because it was illegal back then. And then yes. legalize it. And yes. oh, wow, right. all those problems. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I use that analogy a lot, too. I, I say, you know, so you don't have Maker's Mark going up against Jack Daniels for, for uh, space on, on the shelves in Costco. Right. Yeah. Why is yes. that? Why aren't there m massive, you know, shootings every day uh, by members of the Maker's Mark uh, Corporation against Jack Daniels? Why is that, you freaking moron? <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> well, be, be, before we run out of time on this topic, let me just pull up some of the images, too, because there's one or two things I also wanted to point out in the images. Uh, can, uh, can we get the visual up on this? Uh, Okay. Not seeing the, the visual. You guys. Okay. The, okay. There it is. Uh, so in, in in this particular one, uh, what I wanted to point out in this is that the uh, it's interesting because the protesters in Cuba are actually carrying uh, is some of them carrying American flags. Yes. And this is sort of a debate that we're having in this country over people who. I guess think America is the heart of all evil, and then people yes. who want to get here and want to get out of actually evil places. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and and we saw the same thing in Hong Kong while uh, you know that was being uh, essentially the liberty was being snuffed out there in China recently, and yes. the protesters were showing American flags, hoping that that would uh, that would be sort of a uniting symbol, I guess, of, of liberty. Uh, sure. So I, I just uh, thought that was interesting and. Uh, uh, this is, yeah. this is here, being here juxtaposed. Yeah. Well, what, what are we doing here? Uh, we're burning the American yes. flag in America, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's on a pole upside down, uh, exactly. which, which would be appropriate for the yeah. way they think. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and it's so sad because you, you think about the conditions in this country and what life is really like comparing to a true hellhole which is you know yes. a socialist utopia essentially <laughs> exactly you know you, you know it's funny just recently we had two 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 good examples of this thing there's this woman on msnbc she's one of their commentators and she had made a visit to long island or somewhere around there she's out of new york but she, she had went to long island and she had seen all of these american flags on these uh, from on the, on the trucks of trump supporters and she was so, she found it so disturbing. Oh my God. Oh my God. It was so disturbing. Then we have this idiot, this uh, woman who was running, um, I think she was uh, uh, having a tryout for, for the Olympics or something like that. And it was playing the national anthem. And she turned her back uh, on, on the national anthem. So here we have in this country, in this country, we have Americans showing such disrespect to the flag and to our national anthem. But yet we have people, <clears throat> excuse me, in other countries seeking freedom, seeking the exercise of their liberty, and they're using that symbol that we are disrespecting right here in this country. It is so ironic and amazing that this could be happening right now in our land. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know if we're going to talk about that lady that turned her back to the flag, but <clears throat> help me out here. Are the Olympic Committee rules, do they forbid a person when the, uh, some other country's national anthem is playing, do they forbid the second and third place uh, finishers to turn their backs on the, the flag and the national anthem? Or are they required under uh, Olympic rules to stand with a respect facing toward the, the flag of the, the country that won, it, it, respective of how they felt about the country? Do, do you know? I I think I think there's no prohibition of, uh, about there's no requirement to to um to to honor the flag of the nation or anything like that. I don't think so to be honest. Okay, I think so so if communist China won an event, it, it would be totally okay for the Americans uh, in second and third place to turn their backs or whoever uh, to I, turn their I, backs I, on it. Yes. I believe I, I believe it should be okay. What if but they, you, could, you could imagine they, the outrage though in the media yeah. if, that, if if an America of, did that of, of the sport of poor sportsmanship? Uh, yes, can, can they flip them? Can they flip the bird at the the flag during the anthem of the winning nation? Can they do that according to Olympic rules? Huh? I mean, any kind of any kind of a gesture of disrespect. Can they right. do anything? I mean, what's what's off the table? What's on the table? 
you know, I, that's, I that's know. what I'm. So, uh, you know, I'm circling around to this whole, you know, if, if you're going to, I don't know, rules or no rules, if you're going to represent a country and you don't have the respect for, for that, that country, uh, you know, uh, maybe you ought not to, uh, to be trying out. Maybe you ought to go do something else. Like get, get into politics. There you go. Well, something. Yeah, lots yes. of yeah. You get join the Democratic Party and become a, a spokesperson for um, you know all the oppressed. Well, where, where the you world. can burn the flag every day. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, with impunity. And, exactly. Yeah. And get get accolades out the gazoo. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's what's really disgusting too about this is that. You know, you, you you see people going up there doing this on the podium, uh, you know, to the uh, American flag, which, you know, OK, it, it's flag, it's an idea. But, you know, at the same time, we're literally throwing people off the team who are the best in the world because they decided to put something in their own body. I mean, the yeah. idea that those yeah. those just those yeah. just continuity and thought right. is just crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Those rules. But uh uh, anyway, the, uh, I wanted to uh, just briefly mention, too, that uh, uh, it's odd, too, because uh, the uh, Homeland Security uh, Secretary, I guess, uh, Mayorkas, who is, I believe, a Cuban, he is actually saying that, you know, these Cubans who were trying to get out of there and flee, you know, f across the ocean for their lives uh, to come to the United States, he's saying, you know, you can't come. And we've just been hearing for the last year or two, you know, how, you know, anybody coming from Mexico, hey, it's their right. They should get free health care, everything. Yes. And, and then, yes. you know, these people who are trying to flee the central planning socialism that guys like Biden apparently like. <laughs> Hey, you're not welcome here because, you know, you might vote the wrong way when you get here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I wonder what historically the Cuban vote is. Uh, is it Republican or Democrat? Historic? Heavily, heavily Republican. And, heavily. and the heaviest part of that vote is in Florida. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons gotcha. why. Yeah. Vote. But but uh, just as a juxtaposition, here are pictures of, of immigrants coming from Mexico all wearing Biden T-shirts. <laughs> Please let us Please in. Let us in. And of course, you know, uh, Olay, you know, in. here you go. <laughs> I like how they're, they're, and they're kneeling as good minions, good little yes. uh, law obeying <laughs> yes. minions. Yeah, we're uh, ready to vote for heads. you, by yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And their heads, heads are bowed in reverent honor toward <laughs> our great leader, Joe Biden, that can't string two coherent sentences together to save his life. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so upside down. But speaking of upside down stuff, I want to jump to the next topic before we lose time. Um, in in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, they actually have uh, the, 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 um, the Biden administration is trying to we, we don't need the image for now. I guess we can pull that down. But uh, the Biden administration is working to kill a. Uh, a school choice program that's actually worked well yeah. for poor kids in that uh, in that area. And the Washington Post, uh, oddly, is breaking ranks with the Democratic Party and the teachers unions and the rest yeah. of the lefty media to say, hey, what's going on here? This is actually a good program. And I actually wanted to read their quote, what they posted in their editorial page, because I think it's pretty powerful. It says, on July 8th, uh, uh, the Post's uh, editorial board uh, wrote the following regarding uh, this issue. Uh, so it's uh, for 17 years, a federally funded K through 12 uh, scholarship program has given thousands of poor children in D.C. the opportunity to attend private schools and the chance to go on to college. And for many of those 17 years, the program has been in the crosshairs of unions and other opponents of private school vouchers. Their relentless efforts, unfortunately, may now finally succeed. House Democrats and the Biden administration quietly laying the groundwork to kill this worthy program. And that's the Washington Post. So, I, you know, it's just an absolute crime in this country. The way teachers unions and the Democrat Party have essentially gone hand in hand to, uh, you know, at, at the expense of kids to ingratiate themselves, essentially, at this public trough. It is just absolutely disgusting. And thank goodness the Washington Post is actually sort of waking up to this and saying something about it. This is just horrific. Competition works in every other place in the markets. 
to yes. give us the best good. Yes. And the idea that we can't have it in education because, you know, it's it's really all about the teachers, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. in, they vote Democrats, so there you go. But you guys have any, any thoughts about this? You know, I want you to remember something, okay? Most of the people, most of the kids benefiting from that program mm -hmm. are black or maybe Hispanic in some cases. But you know, it's an amazing thing. The Democrats, who's supposed to love us? I mean, I talk about us, black people. Who's supposed to love us more than life itself? They are the people trying to kill this program. And you have to wonder why, okay? You have to wonder why. You know, since slavery, these people have been trying not to educate black children in this country. I'm not joking about that. I know it sounds like a radical statement. I know it sounds conspiratorial, but go back and look at the history. During slavery, it was illegal to educate a slave who was black. During Jim Crow, they stuck blacks into the most awful schools you could imagine. And now during the Great Society period, what are they doing now? They have them locked into some of the most awful schools that you could imagine. And where do you see these bright spots like in DC with this scholarship program? What are they trying to do? The Democratic Party with their allies in the teachers union are trying to kill the program. And they love us, don't worry. They love us. They love black people and they're gonna save us. God help mm. us. I love your vote anyway. Uh, <laughs> yes. Traditionally, you know, voting Democrats. So uh, that, that may be a starting point for black people listening to this program. Maybe you ought to give your, uh, your vote a consideration a little bit more deeply sure. after Leon's um, uh, uh, good speech there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and, and it's, uh, the, you know, they, they know, especially after COVID and people are wising up to this, um, this horror that is the American school system, public school system, yeah. that uh, they're uh, on the line right now and they know it. And so if they can kill programs that, oh, the horrors would actually give a choice, um, they're, they're all, Democrats love choice when it comes to killing an unborn child. But yes, when it when it Thank comes, you. but when it comes to a choice in uh, where you're sending your kids to get uh, an education, or in some cases, an indoctrination, and, and you know that they, they know that the, it's now the gig is up, and it's time that they have to get rid of any of this choice. This this choice has got to be stamped out in education right. for the teachers union to survive, because they know darn good and well that if things go the way they are, they're going to have less ranks, and there will be less of them. There'll be less money coming their way, and, and more and more people will choose the alternative, which is private education. Indeed. Indeed. And Tim, I love, you. I love your, your statement there about how they love choice when it involves killing the unborn, yeah. but they hate choice when it involves the education of our children. This is a beautiful thing you just said, man. They don't like choice when it comes to buying uh, semi-automatic rifles either. There you go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm, for, like... I'm for free choice. That's what yeah. I'm for. When yeah. it comes to rifles, <laughs> shotguns. <laughs> Handguns, even Lego handguns. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You, you know, the, the, the point is, though, that you don't even have to, to tell people, you know, this is this doesn't have to be a Republican Democrat issue. It just has been because Democrats have been so in bed with the teachers union. But there was a brief period of time uh, when that movie Waiting for Superman came out. And even yes. President Obama had said a few things uh, good about school choice back there early he on. When he first. Uh, it came in, but it, it, they are so in bed with the teachers union that they that they are inextricably locked in a spiral to hell in this uh, area. Uh, so this is something you know if you if you're a Democrat and you just you know hate the idea of voting either Libertarian or Republican, hold your own politicians accountable and vote for Democrats that push school choice. You know, yes. hey, don't settle for this. This is terrible. This is your children's futures at stake and all indeed. of our children. Indeed, indeed. Okay, well, anyways, uh, onward to our knucklehead noise patrol. Uh, that is the portion of the show where we, uh, where we talk about something silly or odd in the, uh, oh, let's see what happened there. That's uh, somehow my image <laughs> left. <laughs> I put on the uh, audio. I don't know. But, uh, well, whatever. It might I, be I, an I, improvement. 
Yes. <laughs> maybe maybe Google is giving me some grooming. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> but but uh, anyways, uh, for our knucklehead noise patrol, we are not people, seeing you, Jason. Yeah, well that's okay. We can just go on with the audio here. Uh, okay. uh, with our knucklehead noise patrol, um, we, we wanted to talk about Macy Gray's call for the American flag uh, as being too white. And <laughs> uh, so essentially Macy Gray, uh, she's a, a Grammy award winning singer. Um, she had recently said that the flag uh, was a replacement for the Confederate flag and a symbol. Uh, and she called for a symbol of opposition to the abolishment of slavery to be the flag, essentially. So, uh, and on, let me give you a quick image of Macy Gray. Can we pull up the image real quick? Just to, uh, and this is... Uh, uh, Macy Gray. So, just so mm. you're aware of who we're talking about there. Yes. Oh, wearing a wearing a stars yeah. and stripes. Uh, <laughs> no, that's right. Seriously. Yeah, exactly. Now, yeah. there, there's a little hypocrisy right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If if the flag is so damn so damn poisonous to her, so damn bad, yeah. why should yeah. why are you wearing images of it? Exactly. Why? Exactly. What's what's going on there? This is sickness. Yeah. Oh, she's she's at a uh, pirate uh, fair. How about that? It looks like <laughs> those those are blasts. But anyway. But but you know this thing goes back to what what, what we we were speaking about earlier. You know that there are people in foreign lands using the American flag as, as a symbol of liberty and freedom, as they seek their own freedom and they seek their own liberties, their liberties that are God, given to them by God, whether they believe in God or not. But here we have people in this country, people like Macy Gray and people like some of these other people trying to tell us there's something wrong with the flag. And I wonder what it is they're going to they want to replace it. What, what it is they want? Oh, you know, we're going to find something new and wonderful to replace this, this flag? What, what, what it is exactly they're talking about here? God, I, I, I just don't get it with these people. I don't think anybody really cares. I, I saw her recently in concert with, uh, I was there for the great Chaka Khan and uh, who put on a great show, but Macy's show was not none too good. Uh, and I don't know Is that, who, who listens to her anyway. Um, uh, so <laughs> uh, there you have it. But <laughs> well, you know, well, some people do, you know, because I mean, she, she, she's a Grammy winner. So that means she must have gone platinum or something with, with yeah, one of her songs, um, or two of yeah. her songs or something. Yeah, but, well, um, you know, I mean, and the B-52s uh, had, had a good one with um, uh, the, sh the Love Shack. Uh, so, uh, you know, once in a while you hit a, hit one out of the park, but <laughs> one, time, yeah. one time doesn't <laughs> quite make it. Yes. <laughs> so she did. She did hit one out of the park, I yeah. guess. So, Apparently. Yeah. Dear God. Dear God. I <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> She has a great backup singer, though, <clears throat> a young gal that uh, that was excellent. So we'll see more from her, hopefully. But I, I, you know, you know, you know, I really wish these people would just shut up. Quite frankly, these people. I don't know why yeah. these celebrities think just because they have a little bit of skill with their music and everything else, and they, yeah. they, you know, they could put it out. And some of us listen to it fine and that kind of stuff. But why do they think they have become experts in anything, whether it's politics, whether it's some social issue? And they always think they have to spout off on these things. And half of them, 99% of the time, is a bunch of crap coming out of their lips. Well, More crap than they could imagine. You know, May Macy Gray could always go to Cuba, I guess, if she wants to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, you know, honor a different flag. But uh, that's about all the time we have at our show today. So thank you all so much for joining us. And uh, stay free. We'll hope to see you at the next one.